my literary luminaries and welcome back. I'm back in my apartment. Yay! Um, I have a new car, so I'm back in the apartment. Finally, I literally only just got back yesterday. And I'm recording this on Monday, so that would be Sunday. It's so nice to be back. And the Tuesday Talks people posted their topics. Now, I'm moving them around a little bit because I'm actually doing last week's topic today and I am not doing this week's topic because I don't really have an answer for it. The topic that I'm skipping, just so you know, the topic that I'm skipping is what middle grade um, book or series or whatnot would you like to see get a young adult sequel? I don't read a ton of middle grade and I don't know which books I've read would be considered middle grade so I can't really speak to it particularly well. So this week's topic for me is your favorite antagonists in fiction. So it kind of sounds like a top five post, but it's not. Um, and it's funny because as I started looking at my bookshelf to see what I could do for this one, I realized that my favorite antagonists don't really look like antagonists at first. And you'll see what I mean. But the first one I want to talk about, unsurprisingly, is Draco Malfoy. I love Draco as an antagonist because he is a convoluted character, there's a lot of stuff going on, and we see a major progression in him throughout the course of the books. You know, the Draco we see, you know, mocking the Weasleys and whatnot in book one, is not the Draco from book seven. I really enjoy the fact that we see this transition, particularly once we hit, you know, book five, book six we really start to see how Draco is struggling with who he is and how exactly he wants to go about continuing in the future. And we really start to feel like, you know, maybe he's trapped in this antagonist role. So I really, really enjoy Draco as an antagonist and he's really the closest to a proper antagonist I have in here. I could talk about Snape. I'm not going to talk about Snape. I talk about Snape all the time. Moving on. The other ones that I found, they're all sort of the same basic concept. So I'm going to list all of them and then I'm going to discuss why I think I like them. One, either Akiva or Karu from the Daughter of Smoke and Bone series, depending on which side you're on. Um, Hyde from Jekyll and Hyde, like the curious, uh, strange case, excuse me, curious case, the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Hyde is very much an antagonist though he is still also Jekyll, sort of. Listen Thier and or the Shot Cavins from the Prince's Game series by M.C.A. Hogarth and uh, Danica or Zane from Hawksong and all of their you know following books by Amelia Atwater Rhodes. As you notice, all of these could be protagonists or antagonists depending on whose side you're looking at. Most of the... Actually, that's not true. Uh, actually, a lot of these books, not all of them, but a lot of these books, switch perspective throughout them. We see Daughter of Smoke and Bone from both Akiva and Karu's points of view at different times. We see the story in Hawksong from both Danica and Zane's points of view, to my memory. Again, it's been a long time. Hyde we see bits and pieces of. Most of it is from Jekyll's point of view, but we sort of see the aftermath of Hyde. We don't see specifically from the dragon's point of view, but in Prince's Game and uh, Some Things Transcend and even the Wingless, we see through Listen Thier what the Shot Covens are doing. The Shot Covens, and pretty much any of these, are only antagonists as long as they fit the description, as long as they're working against the protagonist. And if the protagonist changes, the antagonist then changes as well. And I like watching that balance. I like seeing the reasoning behind it. I like seeing the balance. And it makes so much, it makes the world so much deeper. It makes the world so much more interesting when not everything is black and white. You know, if you're, who am I even? Okay, we'll take Danica and Zane, for example. Um, Danica is an avian. If you're an avian, the snakes are your enemy. Because that's the way those two work. Conversely, if you're Zane and you're a snake, the avians are your enemy. Which one is really the antagonist here? Depends on who you ask. 
Hyde, maybe a little more black and white, given that the whole basis behind Jekyll and Hyde is that Jekyll is the ultimate good of that person and Hyde is the ultimate evil. But Hyde doesn't think he's a villain. And that's the best thing about any villain or any antagonist is they think they're the hero in their own story. And that makes them stronger for it. And Hyde very much feels like he is the hero of his own story. And the Shot Covens think they're heroes of pretty much everything. So that, that fits in with them and whatnot. But I, the problem is it's, it's difficult to say, you know, okay, which one's my favorite antagonist? Whose side am I on when we're asking this? You know, if I'm watching Danica, then yes, Zane's going to be my favorite protagonist. Vice versa, however. And I, I, don't, I don't know if that really counts. <laughs> but that's how I've chosen to sort of view all of this is what I think. Of course, I'd love to know what you guys think. Who are your, some of your favorite antagonists in fiction? Feel free to let me down, down in the comments below. As always, I'd love to hear from you. Also, if you're checking me out on Twitter, you can always find me at KRI and Frey. I'm always there, probably more often than I need to be. But feel free to comment or talk to me. I'd love to hear your opinions on the matter. If you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. You can always subscribe to keep up with my new uploads every time they come up. With any luck at all, they should still come up every Tuesday and Thursday. But until next time, I will see you later for a Top 5 Thursday. Bye!